Hey trumpet players, today's trumpet bath day. You should probably do this every now and again. Why don't you come over to the laundry room and we'll do ours together. So first we clean the sink, run some water. So you want lukewarm, it's too hot. You can bring yourself and you could, uh, if you have a lacquer trumpet, you could actually peel the lacquer right off, which is not a good thing. You're gonna need that. Definitely gonna need that mouthpiece brush. And I've got a fancy cloth or an old t-shirt for cleaning out my valves if I get ambitious. So I'll start with the mouthpiece. And I can do that right now while things are filling up. That's done. Uh, you need one of these, by the way. Um, somewhere around here I've got a ratty old one. I've got a ratty old one here. And the tip on this one is sharp, and I don't want to scratch my mouthpiece, so I'm throwing that one out. It's gone. Okay. I usually, uh, before I even put the stopper in the sink, I'll uh, clean out my lead pipe because it's usually pretty disgusting. First thing though, let's get the valves out. Just undo the cap at the top of the valve. Pull it out. Somewhere on there, there it is, there's a number. I'm going to move in close here and you can see a number one on there. If you look inside the valve, we'll take the bottom cap off so you can see to pay attention here. I just put my valves down. I don't put them in the drink much. Um, some trumpet cleaning videos get all worried about the felts in there. Um, I just don't soak mine a lot. This is a brand new trumpet by the way. Uh, you can see that I've got a little bit of stuff coming off on my hands from these valves. It's because they're brand new. So that's got a nice little number three on it. Okay, we'll get to them in a minute. So now that I've got the valves out, the slides won't pop when I pull them. Uh, this trumpet happens to have an extra little slide there. These could just go right in the drink. Don't get too fussy with them. By the way, if they don't come out at all, you just can't get them to go, take it to a shop. If you yank on those things hard enough, you can spring your valve casings and then your trumpet is basically uh, a lamp. Nice lamp. I think I got enough water going in there. And as it turns out, looks like I've got my trumpet completely apart. I'm taking these valve caps off. They can go in for a little bath. You get in there. It doesn't matter which one goes where. Okay, so while the water is still running, I like to go through my main tuning slide and the lead pipe because, frankly, that's where the most grunge is. This trumpet has never been cleaned. I've been saving it up. You're going to look for a little plume of disgusting stuff coming out of here, just for fun. I didn't even clean the lead pipe. So you can see this. Oh, look at that. Not very much disgusting stuff. I don't know where that came from. So the lead pipe's pretty clean. Let's try this main tuning slide and see what's going on in there. Not much stuff. I've been a good boy. There. I'm gonna let that soak for a little while. Maybe give it 10 minutes. I think I'll swish these out since they're brand new. And as I said, people get all worried about the felts getting wet. Well, geez. It's a machine. You can take it. And if you need new felts 30 years down the road, you need new felts. That, uh, oh, <laughs> you know what? That one's brand new. This one was brand new when I bought it. In 1975 you can see it's a little worn on the outside but these valves almost never come out and I have never once looked at that felt I dropped these in the water a thousand times listen for this click these valves work great trumpets kind of worn you can see the lead pipes pretty much shot but hey, 
the valves work great. So, let it soak for a bit. And we're back, have a little break. Let's give these guys a scrub-a-dub. No, oh, nothing coming out, that's a good sign. That's probably because I generally try to clean my mouth, at least by rinsing. Now look, here's the thing. You don't want the end of this brush to scratch the insides of your valve casings. So I measure like that, and then there's no way that's going in too far. I'm just going to go in. I can look for it and see, oh yeah, it's just poking its nose out. I know, that's it. If you want to do it a bunch of times, go for it. Next one, again, measure it so you don't go too far. You do not want to scratch the insides of the valve casings. You want all the grunge, but you don't want to do any damage. Now you can see that that one actually carries on through there. I usually don't bother. I'm not going to get in there and scratch things up just so that I can get into that little orifice. Um, keeping your trumpet relatively clean really means there's never going to be a lot of grunt, gunk and crud in there. I do like to see if I can get, see if I can scratch my bell up, uh, see if I can get this around. And for that one, I just watch. And once I think I'm caught around and I'm getting close to the valves, I go really slow. Oh, there it is. And pull it out. There's not going to be much in there. So, you get a little surprise out of there. That's that. Um, again, with I'll show you that old trumpet again. It's the same trumpet, by the way, just 40 years apart. Um, I was never very careful about wiping down the instrument on the outside after I'd been playing. And you can see that in this trumpet. You can see how it's kind of, the silver plate is worn right through. Now some of that's just wear, but a lot of it is me not caring about the outside of the horn. This one's all shiny and new, so I'm gonna try and care about it. Um, I will use that fancy cloth that the music store gave me. This guy here, and I'll wipe this instrument down. Um, you know what, maybe right now. There's no lint, this is a special lint-free cloth. You can do the same thing with an old t-shirt or something else that looks like it's not going to produce a lot of lint. Don't get too fussy with it. It's not a holy relic. I like to get in here, in these places, and get the old grease out. In these little nooks and crannies and spots. You shouldn't really need to get in there with a brush. Uh, but you can see that I got some grunge out of there. This thing's looking pretty clean and really less is more so I'm just going to put it down and I'll get some slides going. No magic here. Hose them out. If you really want if this trumpet was really disgusting, I would have put some soap in. I've got some soap handy, but I just didn't use it because this trumpet's looking pretty clean. I should go and grab the tuning slide out of my C trumpet so you can see what grunge looks like because I can't remember when I cleaned that thing last. Maybe six months. Now, you do not have to force this all the way around there. Again, if you keep your trumpet relatively clean, you're not going to have buildup. You're not going to have stuff floating around in there. And these guys, while I go through it, I'm just using my hand to take any extra bits of loose grunge off them. If you think you got some, you could maybe use some soap. Um, those valve caps... <clears throat> I've seen some really disgusting bottom valve caps, but these ones are clean because I keep my trumpets clean. If there's a little stuff in there, you might want to get your mouthpiece brush or the end of your snake and just give it a little once over. 
and not going to take very much. Okay, so that's the trumpet. That's the trumpet clean. When we reassemble it, we're just going to take our time and get grease on all the slides and valve oil in the valve casings and the valves. Okay. All right. So there are videos out there telling you to take this all business apart. I don't think you should. I don't think you need to. That old trumpet there, I could probably count on my thumbs the number of times those valves have been apart. There's no need. This just gets that. If it looks like there's grossness built up in there, I might brush it. I am being incredibly gentle here because the tolerances in your valves are unbelievably fine. And you just do not want to mess with them. I don't even usually dry them, I just give it a shake. That's it. That's one. I'll do this just because I'm just touching those ports in case there's a little bit of scum building up in there. It's a bit like going to the dental hygienist to have your plaque removed. There shouldn't be much in your trumpet. Okay, valves are done. Let's put this baby back together. One more thing, if you're having trouble with your valves and you've tried different oils, you've tried the synthetics, nothing's working, if you've got a valve that's giving you some grief, get a tool like this. The trombone players in your band probably have one of these that's really long. It's quite possible that the flute players have one that's a reasonable length. This one is made for trumpet valves. It's been used to stir paint and so on. But anyway, what you want to do is put the cloth in there and then give it a twirl and make sure that the cloth goes over the top. You do not want that metal, even though this feels like it's aluminum. You don't want that metal anywhere near your valves. So let's just say for fun that this valve is giving me some trouble. I will put it in the water, use the water as a lubricant and just ease that in there and back. I'll do all three because this is a brand new horn and there could be metal filings in there. And that's it. I'm not going to do any more than that because these valves took about two weeks to run in but they're working great. So that's it for valve cleaning. Now we'll put it together. Again, this uh, this trumpet has an extra part here, so we'll, let's start with that. This is the uh, stuff that I like. There are other brands on the market. I always seem to come back to the Selma Red Goo. The um, bottle breaks all the time, so I'm always buying the stuff. You see what I'm doing. This is going to go in here. We're actually going to put it in wrong. I like to be this way and this one's a little snug. This actually, this slide when it was brand new was too loose. So I took it to see Kelly and my guy and he put an expander in there and made it bigger so it fits better. I think it fits better. Yeah. Now when you do this you'll get some excess and you just wipe it off. Just like that. So that's essentially a job. Now that was the easy one because it's not on the trumpet. What I usually do next is I do these two parts here. Your trumpet might be a little different up here. If, it, if you're not looking at the inside tube then you don't have to do it in this order. You could just do that whole slide at once. You see I'm just putting a little zigzag of grease on there. I'm gonna get my finger involved and get it everywhere I want it to get. After a while you get good at knowing how much is too much. You just need to do it a few times. Okay, so we want to put a little bit of that. I'm just going to clean my hand off so I don't get more grease on the trumpet. A little bit of that on here. Now this is not the right grease for third valve slides but I'll show you what I do with it in a minute. That one's ready. 
and I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is I'm going to put the bottom, you know, I'll try not to wreck anything, and just give it a wiggle, just to get that grease all over the place, and then I'm going to put it in, and wipe off the excess. Some of it right down inside there. I may never get that. Yeah, probably not. First valve slide on my trumpet is adjustable. If yours doesn't have this little thumb saddle, then you probably are looking at two tubes here. Lube them up. Do the same thing. Get that grease everywhere. Put it together. Clean it off. You could spend a little more time cleaning. As you can tell, I don't bother. The second valve slide doesn't really go anywhere, but it needs the grease anyway. The grease helps form a seal between the slide and the, and the tubes it goes into. So it fits tight, won't fall out, but also it won't leak on you. If it leaks, it's gonna the sound is gonna get bad. Obviously, if it falls out, you're gonna have some dents. By the way, dents aren't the end of the world, but we kind of want to avoid them. Okay, main tuning slide. So I put the same grease on everything today. Just to keep it simple. There we go. Grease is everywhere. Let's get in there. And take the excess off. All right. I got some little dogs to put on there, but I'm not going to do that yet until I get this valve slide feeling the way I want it to. So I'll just hold those, these little guys here. I'll just leave those for now because I got work to do on that slide before I'm happy. So let's get to the valves. I'm uh, stuck on synthetic valve oils. Uh, I really like the synthetics. This particular one is working for me. I'm just going to do this over the sink because I'm going to waste some valve oil here. What I'm doing is dribbling it inside the valves, inside the casings, rather. And I'm not too worried about saving it. So, I haven't put the bottom valve caps yet on for a reason. Uh, if you can guess, I'm pretty liberal with the oil. I'm just checking the number on this valve. This is my third valve. And I'm looking at it. Okay, there's the number. There's the small tab and the big tab. And again, I'm giving her lots of oil. You look inside, you will see a shoulder. In my valve, there's a wide shoulder on the far side. That's for the wide tab. There's a narrow one and a wide one. Some trumpets, these tabs are plastic. I'm being really careful to get that in there and if it doesn't just drop in You might want to give that valve a rinse. There could be a hair or a piece of dust Beauty And a little extra drop why not That was three This is two Part of my process is I keep them in order, but another part of my process is I don't trust it. There we go. The tolerances are so fine. These uh, were all manufactured to have the same dimensions, but they wear themselves in, I don't know what the how fine these tolerances are. I assume it's in the tens of thousands of an inch. So really you don't even want one valve in the, in the wrong casing. You want them in their own casings. And I don't run them up and down until I've got them in and tightened. And there's probably the oil leaking out the bottom because I put so much in there. Which is why the valve caps come last. That one's got a little water in it. Okay, that one too. 
Now, do this gently, and if you can't, if, if it's not just starting, gently turn it the wrong way until you hear the threads click, and then it'll go for you. So, that one just went. Now, if these parts are stuck on your trumpet and won't come out, there are some tricks you can try, but to be honest, I would just take it to a shop and say, hey, can you get my valve caps off? Okay, this trumpet is back together. That guy's clean. Okay, it's going to work. Now you can test for air going through it. I will not turn a valve around in this. I can go grab a beater if you like and turn it around so you can see. But um, essentially, um, if you have a valve in backwards, the air won't go through. So I haven't put those little doggies on yet because I'm not happy with this slide. And I knew I wouldn't be because I put the heavy grease on it. Usually, I find that a couple drops of oil is enough to thin it to the point where I like it. I like this slide to move so freely that when the trumpet's on the stand, oops, what am I doing? When the trumpet's on the stand, that slide will actually just lower itself. And I want to be able to do this over its entire length. That's why I didn't put the dogs on yet. Oh, it's starting to feel good now. That's about where I want it, so I think I'll leave it and practice for a couple hours and see how that goes. Same thing on the first valve. You can buy special stuff that's made for these guys, but then that's, you know, more stuff you got to carry in your case. My trumpet, uh, some trumpets have a little, uh, a little screw that goes like this to keep that third valve slide from falling out. My trumpet's got this system here. There we go. I like mine out at the end for those C sharps. That's it. I'm going to give it a wipe just to get rid of any valve oil or grease that's on it. The final step, if you share your residence with somebody else, is to go back to the sink and clean up your mess. You will have an unbelievable ring around the tub. Look at mine. Yes, this tub was clean. I cleaned it before. Is that? Oh boy, I'm gonna need some kind of cleaner on that. You're gonna need a degreasing. Maybe so, the original degreaser. Let's try that. Yeah, that's gonna work. It's not gonna be fun. Where's my claw?